Here's another example using a simple extension. In this case, the degree over the rationals is equal to 4. We have alpha equal to square root of 2 plus square root of 3 in the reals. We ask the same type of questions as in the previous example. First, I want to show that q adjoint alpha equals q adjoint square root of 2 adjoint square root of 3 as subfields in the reals. Then we want to find the minimal polynomial f sub alpha for alpha over the rationals. Finally, I want to express alpha inverse as a polynomial in alpha over the rationals. For part one, okay, I want to show all the details. So our first step, I want to show that q adjoins square root of 2 adjoins square root of 3, we'll call this L, has degree 4 over the rationals. Now let's call k1 q adjoins square root of 2, k2 q adjoins square root of 3, both in the reals. Now, each of these fields is going to have degree 2 over the rationals. So here, okay, we have a basis over the rationals given by 1 and square root of 2. Here we have a basis given by 1 and square root of 3. So degree 2 extensions. Now, if we consider the intersection of k1 and k2, possibilities for the degree of the intersection over the rationals is either 1 or 2. In the first case, that means k1 intersect k2 is equal to the rationals. In the second case, we'll have that k1 is equal to k2. So let's show that that can't happen. Now, if we have q adjoint square root of 2 equal to q adjoint square root of 3, then I can write square root of 3 as a plus b square root of 2, where a and b are rational. If I square both sides, okay, we get this equation here, and then we can go through each case. So what can happen is, if a is equal to 0, then I can write 3 halves as a square of a rational. That can't happen. If b is 0, then square root of 3 is rational. That can't happen. Finally, otherwise, we'll have square root of 2 in the rationals. That can't happen either. So the second possibility is not going to be an option. So the intersection of k1 and k2 is equal to the rationals. Now that means square root of 3 is not in q adjoint square root of 2. That means x squared minus 3 is irreducible over q adjoint square root of 2. Okay, we know this factor is in the reals as x plus square root of 3 times x minus square root of 3. So this doesn't split over this field. Now, that means if I take k1 adjoint x, mod out by the ideal generated by x squared minus 3, okay, that's going to give us a degree 2 extension of k1. So this will be isomorphic to k1 adjoint square root of 3, or q adjoint square root of 2 adjoint square root of 3. So the way we build up our field tower, I have degree 2 extension over the rationals, okay, q adjoint square root of 2. Then we build up another extension, degree 2, by adjoining the square root of 3. So this extension is going to have degree 4 over the rationals. Now, to find a basis of L over Q, we find bases for each extension and then take all products. So one basis of L over Q is given by 1, square root of 2, square root of 3, square root of 6. Because this is a basis over the rationals, this set is linearly independent over the rationals. Getting back to the original problem, we first note Q alpha is a subfield of Q adjoint square root of 2, square root of 3. So the degree of q adjoint alpha over q is either 1, 2, or 4. Now, let's look for a largest linearly independent set in q adjoint alpha. So I start off with 1 and alpha. So we have 1 square root of 2 plus square root of 3. If we put in alpha squared, okay, we get 5 plus 2 square root of 6. And we see that these three vectors are linearly independent over the rationals by this result. That means the degree must be equal to 4. And that means q adjoint alpha is the same as q adjoint square root of 2, square root of 3, as subfields in the reals. Next, I want to find the minimal polynomial of alpha over the rationals. Now, here I can build things up in a straightforward manner since we're only using square roots. So the key is difference of two squares. Now, we know this polynomial is going to have alpha as a root. So we start off with x minus square root of 2 minus square root of 3. 
Here, I can group the x with the square root of 2. Then we're just going to multiply by the conjugate of this expression. So I'm going to multiply by, okay, parentheses, x minus square root of 2 plus square root of 3. I have a difference of two squares, which gives x minus square root of 2 squared minus 3. So we expand and we get x squared minus 2 squared of 2x minus 1. Now, we we'll regroup, so I have x squared minus 1 in parentheses minus 2 squared of 2x. We multiply by the conjugate here. So I multiply by x squared minus 1 plus 2 squared of 2x. And again, we have a difference of two squares. So we work that out. And that leads us to x to the fourth power minus 10x squared plus 1. Now, we check our work. So we want to make sure that square root of 2 plus square root of 3 is a root. So we'll settle for an approximation. So when we put alpha into our polynomial, okay, approximated by 3.146, a 0 comes out. You'll also notice by this construction, okay, the other roots of this polynomial Okay, we'll have plus minus square root of 2 plus square root of 3 plus minus square root of 3 minus square root of 2. So we have square root of 2, square root of 3, and all possible signs. Note, the degree of Q adjoint alpha over the rationals is equal to 4. That's also the degree of the minimal polynomial over the rationals. So that forces our minimal polynomial to be x to the fourth minus 10x squared plus 1. Now, because minimal polynomials are always irreducible, that means this polynomial is irreducible over the rationals. We could have proceeded through this part exactly as we did in the previous example. So I leave this here for you to check the work. Now, for the final part, I want to express alpha inverse as a polynomial in alpha over the rationals. We use f sub alpha, so if we evaluate alpha, we get 0. So alpha to the fourth minus 10 alpha squared plus 1 is 0. And now we just rearrange terms. So we leave the 1 on this side, push the alpha to the four alpha squared terms to the other side, factor out an alpha. That gives alpha times something equal to 1, so this something must be equal to alpha inverse. We substitute in for alpha, so that's going to give us, when we work things out, alpha inverse equal to square root of 3 minus square root of 2. That's what we would have gotten had we just worked putting 1 over square root of 3 plus square root of 2 multiplied by the conjugate over itself. Of course, when we check, we just see that's exactly what we expect. We get a 1 out. 